This is uh, Dr. Jason Fountain. He's the superintendent over here at CCSS, Central Community School System. Uh, thank you for sitting down with me today. And no, thank you for the opportunity. So um, I know you've been the superintendent at Central for some time now. If you don't mind kind of giving a quick synapse of how that came to be, you know, how long you've been here, that type of thing. Well, I started uh, working in the Central Community School System in 2009. I was assistant principal over at Tanglewood Elementary School. I was there for three and a half years. Then I went to the middle school. I was principal there for uh, four years from 2012 to 2016. Then I came over to the central office, worked in the curriculum side for secondary schools. Um, and then in 2017, Mr. Falk said that he was going to retire at the end of the year. Um, never had any inclination to be the superintendent, never, truly never had that as a desire. Um, but I feel like that, you know, sometimes when the Lord opens doors, you just walk through them. Right. And in this case, that's sort of what happened. I was already at the central office. Um, he was going to retire. I was encouraged to buy some people to go for it. Um, I, I also had young kids at that time. Um, I knew we were going to be in Central. And um, so just kind of walked through the door. And I'll be finishing up my sixth year here in December. So it's awesome. uh, really, really been a great opportunity. I'm excited about some of the things we've done. Super excited about the things, you know, coming down the pipe. But, right. uh, you know, very, very excited about it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about it. I was looking at your bio on the website and kind of, going through you were my principal at tanglewood and then when you moved to middle school there was overlap there and i'm, I'm kind of dating myself here um but it's it's kind of cool to say you know okay you know i in a weird way saw you progress from you know assistant principal to principal into the school board into now superintendent and then getting kind of a backseat view now that i'm not in the school necessarily but seeing some of the stuff that y'all are doing, I mean, this building is immaculate, to put it lightly. The uh, football field here behind us and then even the, the renovations at the high school. I mean, it is truly amazing, some of the stuff that y'all got. Well, done. I'll say this, too. Really, from, from my standpoint, you said you've seen me progress. And that's true. I've also, like you said, I've seen you grow up. Right. Seeing you from being a, you know, a kid at Tanglewood to growing up through the middle school, seeing you graduate from the high school, seeing you now in the in the real world, yeah. you know, doing your thing. And that's that's the thrill for anyone who's in education. It's seeing kids grow up, reaching their dreams, being able to do the things they want to do in their life, give you know, get married, have a family, you know, live the American dream. Right. That's what our school system's about. Um, I am excited about things we've done over the years. A uh, lot of facility improvements, and I'm sure we'll talk some more about yeah, that. But yeah. um, no, it's it's really been a good journey for us. There's so many great things about Central. There's so many great things about this city, this community, how they wanted their own school system. Um, but it's been great seeing you and so many others who came through at that same time grow up and now be the young people who are who are going to be leading this city to the future. Right. Yeah. And it was really. You know, it, it didn't really hit me until I was sitting at graduation 2019, the year before I graduated, and you gave a speech about how the class of 2019 was the first class to go K through 12 as a central community school system. Right. And that was kind of the, the moment that I realized, like, okay, like, that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Like, and then I was a year after that, which is a little less cool, but still cool. <laughs> that's right. um, but it was it was you know it, just hearing you talk about that at that graduation and then you know obviously COVID happened when i graduated right. so we didn't have a true blue graduation but um it was really really neat to hear you talk about seeing just like you just said with me seeing those kids and seeing those well now adults right <clears throat> go from tanglewood to the middle school to the high school and then now graduating and they're doing great i keep up a lot of it's absolutely what i think has to be so gratifying for the people in central were those early founders who had this vision and i've heard them say that even in the 80s there were small groups of people who would meet and talk about forming their own school system really and of course it really started in the early 2000s but the thought that that a you know small group of dedicated people who wanted to have their own school system to be able to forge their own way for the kids of Central got together, 
went through this incredible process that most people don't even understand. It has to be voted on across the state. You have to go through the state legislature. So many pieces. You know, first of all, having to form a city, which, right. which they were not even going to do, but forming the city so that they could form the school system. So I think about that with that first class in 2019, how gratifying for that small group of people who had been talking for 20 or 25 years about forming a school system. And here was this first group of kids who came from kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade. That so, is cool. Yeah, and that's one of the great things about Central. It's, 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 a, it's a hardworking blue collar town, people who want to forge their future, yeah. who want to be in control of that. And that's that's kind of what this this you know this whole school system was built out of. Right, small town USA, that type Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. So, I mean, I know we kind of talked about you didn't really have an aspiration in the beginning to, you know, jump into that superintendent role. Um, I know I remember when Mr. Falk said that he was going to step down, and you know there was a lot of questions. I think I was a sophomore in high school, and uh, there was a lot of questions that a lot of people had, and. I wasn't paying a ton of attention to yeah, I was like 16. Sure. Um, how did how did that kind of come to fruition? I mean, was there ever previously a thought like, hey, you know, I would love to have a, a position like that? Or was it kind of like, hey, I want to be principal, be more hands on with the school? How, how, how did that come come about? Well, it's, you know, sort of like I said, I think um, I didn't have an aspiration to be a superintendent. It was not, right. I want to be a superintendent. Uh, no. But I think what I've always done is whatever job I, I've been in, I've just, just worked as hard as I could to do the very best that I could. Right. And, but when I, but basically when I threw my heart over the bar and said, I'm going for this, I'm going to, you know, I want to be the superintendent, then I really did take a lot of time to, to think about what we could do out here. Yeah. And that's when I got very excited because you know, the vision of the school system from day one for me has been very clear, and it's to create world-class schools. And people will say, well, what does that mean? Well, to me, to create a world-class school system means our school system is as good as any in the state, as good as any around the country. Right. And it's not just an academic piece. It's a, it's a multifaceted piece. Think about arts, academics, athletics. It's a well-rounded opportunity, certainly right. academics, but also it's the experience of the kids. It's the opportunities of the kids and you know, giving them the opportunity to be able to do everything they can. From an academic perspective, um, the world has changed now. Right. So when kids graduate, most kids know, okay, I'm going to college or I'm not gonna go to college. Right. If they're not going to college, then what we have to do is we have to prepare those kids for a high wage, high demand, opportunity to be able to step out into the workforce right and that's sort of how we have uh, shifted what we do at the high school and we have some awesome programs now for our students who are going to move into the workforce yeah welding From, carpentry like of course all the all the traditional trades like welding right. and all those pieces but but it's also expanded into the health sciences okay so the certified nursing assistants um, you know, medical assistance, lots of areas in that realm. Also, if you look at our culinary program, we started an awesome culinary program. Right, I mean, that. so that was kind of getting started while I was at the school. And I remember I went back for the tour uh, when y'all officially yes. opened up and let everybody go look around the renovations at the high school. And they had these little, you know, little bite here and a little bite here. I was like walking around Costco. I oh, was yeah. lost, but there was food and oh, I was yeah. like, I was just happy. And uh, th the food that they put out was really good. It was phenomenal. I mean, it's a great program to prepare our kids to move into the hospitality industry. Right. So, so, so what we've done is we tried to modify the high school to make sure it's ready and it's preparing our kids. Obviously, our kids that are going to go to college, we want to prepare them as well. We started a new program yes, uh, last year called Wildcat College. So these students will start in ninth grade. And this year, we started last year with the ninth grade cohort. They're in the 10th grade now. We started a new cohort in ninth grade this year. Okay. Essentially what will happen is when these kids graduate, if they stay on track, they will earn an associate's degree when they graduate, which is 60 hours. Really? So when they earn that, uh, they'll obviously have a TOPS you know, scholarship, right. which pays for four years. So if they have 60 credit hours, they go to college, they can graduate in two years or you know whatever they need to finish their degree. Then you have an additional two years potentially for a master's or something else. That's awesome. The program's not for everybody. 
But it's but again, what we're trying to do, and what I think a world class school system does, is it provides for everybody, yeah. whatever their need is. It does give the opportunity for the very highest academic achievers, but it also um, serves students that are also high academic achievers, but are not planning to go to college. They want to move into the workforce, right. which is which is uh, you know a valid career decision for people, and it's up right. to them. But we want to provide them an opportunity, not just to earn a, a uh, you know a high school diploma. But to be able to move out into the world and get work. Right. Well, you know, the next question I was going to ask was what your vision for the school was. And I think that what you just explained well, it really hits. But as far as, like, future plans, like yep. five years from now, you know, and it's hard to predict. Well, I, but I think you have to have a vision for where you're going and what you want to create. Right. One piece that we've worked on extensively really over the last three years is, is all of the facility improvements. And you mentioned that earlier, but this corner is really just fantastic now. Yeah. And I mean, the school board building, which um, all of that money to build this building came from the state, you know, our state senator, Bodie White, got that for us, thank right. goodness. Uh, but the work we've done on the stadium, but also, you know, putting $25 million into the high school renovation, it's, a, it's basically a brand new school on the inside now. But a lot of other things, coming down the pike also um, we just started a renovation for the weight room at the high school that's awesome um, it's actually three it's, it's going, it, this whole project will be about three million dollars so okay. We're going to renovate the weight room. There will be athletic meeting rooms uh, and, and also a new locker room for softball. That's awesome. And <clears throat> all of this is beginning now. The weight room should be done by May. Uh, softball will be this summer, uh, but it's going to be an awesome facility. So, again, you know, what we're doing is we're looking at um, how do we provide the facilities, the academics, the programs that everybody needs. But our facilities have been a little behind, but I feel like in the last three years we've made a lot of ground on that. Yeah, our mean, schools are really in good shape. When you look at Tanglewood Elementary, which flooded in 2016, basically a brand new school because it was totally redone then. Right. We did add an additional building there, so we have no T buildings on that campus. That's so basically a brand new school. Of course, we have the intermediate and the middle school that are 10 years old. Right. Those were, <clears throat> and they're still in great shape. They were brand were new. Brand new. Yes. Yeah. So I remember going to school at uh, Starkey on Joel yes. Road. Yes. And I think that was fourth grade. And then fifth grade was the first year that the intermediate That's school right. was open. That's and right. I was over there. Yeah. So, it's, so we really made a concerted effort to address the facility issues. Yeah. And we're, we're going to keep those coming. I mean, we're going to make sure that we're, um, you know, we have world-class facilities for our kids. And that's that's what we're, you know, we're working toward and we're going to continue to do that. All right. That's awesome. I mean, I can't say enough. I wish I had before and after pictures that I could flash, you know, in this video. And I'm going to take some pictures of the school board and the field and all that. But, I mean, I remember my uh, freshman year orientation, my parents came with me because, you know, they were, right. you know, just doing their thing as parents. And they walked in. The first thing that they said was, wow, this is the same school. The only difference that they said was apparently the commons used to have carpet in it. <laughs> To which I say that was an awful idea from, from yes, like day from one. The but uh, and then walking back, you know, I went to that tour and I'm I'm walking in and somebody tried to hand me a map. And I was like, I don't need a map. Right. No, like this. I, I was here three years ago. I don't need a map. And uh, I should have taken a map. Yes. Because it is it's a new school. I mean, well, the school was built. Uh, I think the first class there was in 1973. Okay. And. In 2019, if you walked into that school and you had been at that school any time between 73 and 2019, it basically looked the same. You had the same, you know, Brady Bunch uh, looking. Uh, That's a really you know, good family way to consumer science it, yeah. room. Uh, you know, all the classrooms were just old. It was dark. You had these long, narrow corridor walkways. Yeah. So when we started looking at our renovation for the high school, we brought students in, we brought teachers in, we talked to them got their opinions everybody said we got to open it up yeah. we want, you know we want more natural light we yeah. want we don't want these long dark corridors these you know long hallways so you know we really said the library was the hub of the school 
beautiful with all the glass so you can see in the commons area adding the coffee shop but then flowing into the new commons area with the second gymnasium yeah those are those are pieces that you know the public gets to see a lot and that's where the faith and fathers is, that's right, right? that's yep. the, that's right that and that's a really cool thing that you're i assume they had to get approval from the school yeah board absolutely and stuff, I, and that, that's one of the things coach Semino when he came in that's something he wanted to to start which and i he, think is awesome i mean awesome and he he wanted the foundation of building the athletic program to be based on the right things right and that's one of the that, you know we talked about what's great about central that's another great thing about central very conservative values um oftentimes i'll kind of half-heartedly say god's gun god guns and country yeah because <laughs> if any of those three you're in the right place for that and right. it's i mean that that's but that's what you want that's what you love about this community it's a small community people are involved they're invested right. they want to be involved in it uh but they're very conservative and it's, faith is important you know all these pieces that make up small town america that's what's central it's very hallmark movie-ish yes, in a lot is. of ways it which is. makes that's me laugh but uh i mean it's it is a great community and you know set as far as being set apart from other communities you know we are smaller than some of our surrounding towns right um and i think everybody knows everybody mm -hmm. you know that's a huge thing for me uh just walking into walmart or walking into oak point my wife she's not a socialite okay so she's she's like if she's gonna go in walmart her head's down she's going right to the aisle and right out and i will go in together and i'll see three or four people right and she's like i mean could you i mean we got somewhere to be you know it's like it's it's funny to me but that is something that i really love about central absolutely and i don't know if they have that and you know denim walker zachary right. those places i'm sure there is to some extent mm -hmm. but everybody knows everybody in central which is awesome to me right. because it's just a community that's what makes a community it's more it's less of a community more of a family right you know in a lot of ways and you know that that's cool to me you i got, agree I, I think um you know what you get in central is you get the you get the allure of the small town environment right but you're right on the outskirts of baton rouge right. i mean so you're it, it, you know, Central's very similar to the little town I grew up in, Bruton, Alabama. Except Bruton, Alabama is in the, it's in the middle of the state on the bottom in Alabama, about an hour north of Pensacola. Small town, very similar to Central, but it's not on the outskirts of a major city. Right. Um, but you still feel that in Central. And, you know, I love the controlled growth that, you know, we have in Central. We're not exploding. That's not the plan. That's not what the city leaders want. Uh, but it's controlled growth, and right. it's and that's that's what allows you to keep that small town allure that you that you have. You're not going to lose it, and they're just bringing in businesses left and right all over the place. There's a plan, there's a layout, right. there's a way they're trying to do it. Yeah, I've and been to those city council meetings. They're, absolutely, they're very intent with you know the which I think is awesome that we we have a Five Guys. We're getting an right. Izzo's, absolutely. you know, places like that. The Jersey Mikes, I loved like that's probably my new favorite mm -hmm. little quick lunch in town uh but seeing those places come up and then seeing how it's almost like in order to be in central as a business owner you've got to be a part of central right you know we're not just a paycheck we're a community and jersey mike's has done stuff you know I, i'm sure izzo's <clears throat> will do stuff i know lit pizza canes there's always a restaurant that's backing the school or oh, backing the, a family or an organization that is so cool to me because you don't get that in baton rouge you know right. 30 minutes down the road you're not going to see a line down the street to get into canes because it's a free dress day tomorrow that's you right. know i mean absolutely and that's i laugh every time that i see canes like crazy busy oh, on a yeah. random tuesday night because i'm like oh, you know they're giving yeah. something to the school right yeah, yeah they're doing a you know mention Fundraiser. mention central and get free dress That's you right. know it's like that, that you don't see that anywhere else right at least nowhere that i've been that's right and that kind of wraps into you know i was going to ask you what's your favorite aspect of central if you just had to pinpoint one thing what would you say is this is the reason that central is my home well that that's easy it's the people right uh, i mean it is the community and it's, and it's a small town feel which is very familiar to me because that's how i grew up but more than anything it's the people there's just good people here and 
uh, you know, it's like you said, you, you know the people in Central. You know, yeah. so many of the people in Central have been here forever. What's been great for me, I've only been in Central since 2009, but there's so many parents that I deal with now um, who their kids came through Tanglewood or the middle school, so I've known them. I feel like I've built relationships over the last 14 years with so many people in the community right. because I've, their kids have grown up, and I've seen a lot of the kids grow up, and now they're at the point where they're going to start having kids and coming up, which I think will be really cool. But it's as easy as the people, and it's uh, it's just this blue-collar work ethic. It's not this, this entitlement mentality in Central. It's just good people, hardworking people that love others, that want to help others. You know, I've always said, any town in need in Louisiana or when a crisis comes or a hurricane hits, you can count on the cooking in Central or you can count on some, somebody in Central to be having a jambalaya fundraiser or, <laughs> right. or, or, or do cooking in Central to raise money to send off somewhere. I mean, that's what you see in Central. There's always some kind of fundraiser going on with a jambalaya cook-off or something. Right. Because it's just good people wanting to help other people. And that's, I mean, well said. Um, so, I mean, we've kind of gotten the meat potatoes of what I wanted to talk to you about. <clears throat> I'd like to do something with you that I'm going to call due <laughs> diligence. Um, I'm in real estate, so everything's got to tie back into you know due diligence, that type of period. It's essentially five questions that I want to ask rapid fire style okay. that I think would tell us a lot about a person. Okay, They're kind of silly, kind of funny, lighthearted, gotcha. but I do think that we can learn a lot about people from this. Okay. So question number one, if you could have lunch with anyone from history, who are you taking and where are you going? Hmm. I tell you who I would love to sit down with is Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Um, I have a lot of admiration for his leadership style. I, I have read a lot about him. He really built consensus. He um, he brought people along on the journey with him. Many people that he had political battles with, he would end up putting on his team if he beat them. Really? A anyway, he, he, he had a very unique style. Where would I take him? If I'm in Central, we're going to Stabs. That's Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, who's the smartest person you know? just off the top of your head and this wow. doesn't have to be like highest educated right it could be just savviness however you want to determine smarts that is a very good question who is the smart well i mean now my my wife is brilliant okay um I, you know i have to say her. that's a great answer love you sweetie um look we we have a lot of smart people in here I might say Mr. Hood's pretty smart. Okay. Uh, Scott Scott Hood, who right. works in our office now, who used to work with you. Uh, I mean, who, who was one of your teachers, I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the other guys I know is Jason Dupuy. Yep. Yeah, you probably don't yeah. remember him. No, I do. He, I do he worked him. with me um, when whenever I was at the middle school. Super smart guy. Yeah. Super super smart. Um, when you were ten years old, what did you want to be professionally? Easy. I wanted to be a major league baseball player for the Dodgers. Come on. What position did you play? First base. Okay. So, but I loved uh, Steve Garvey, um, uh, you know, all, all these guys who play for the Dodgers. I don't know why I was a Dodgers fan. <laughs> you know, Growing up in, in Alabama, Alabama, yeah. But I love uh, the Dodgers. Yeah, I want to be a baseball player. Love that. Love that. Me too. Um, okay. If we were going to make a movie out of your life... <laughs> Who would play you in that movie? Easy, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, come on. I, I, mean, I mean, hey, if it's going to be my movie and I'm picking them out, it's going to be Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, right. I mean, I was thinking like Dwayne, Baby Tom Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> you know, I mean. <laughs> I'm not going to go that look, far. Get you, however you want like to do it. it. I like okay. it. Okay. And this is the last question. Okay. I think this is probably the most interesting as far as how you're going to answer it. Would you in hand-to-hand -hand combat? This is no tools or anything. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Say that again. So one huge duck that's the size of a horse, <laughs> right, right. or one hundred horses that are small but they're the size of a duck, an average duck, we'll call it five pounds. No, I think I'd take one. Take on one. One duck. Yes. Really? Yeah, the size of a horse. Yeah. Come on. I, yeah, I'd do that. I mean, a hundred, hundred would be too difficult. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, they take you down and then they swamp you and you're done. <laughs> you get overrun. Yes! <laughs> There's a hundred of them, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... I'm going to have to contemplate before that's I a, give an answer. That's a question. That's a... Uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll give you the nobility of that. The the large duck, I think I would probably stray away from. Cause <laughs> I, I would, I mean, just the, the size advantage that that, that goes no doubt. would throw me no off. Doubt. But no doubt. Uh, look, I really appreciate you sitting down with me today and, and shooting this little interview. Um, obviously, I'll be around and, and we'll be in touch and hopefully Absolutely. we get to collaborate on a couple more things in the future. So. I really appreciate it. Uh, go Wildcats. And, I will and it's a great day to be a Wildcat. That's right. That's it. <laughs>